You could be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with me, Expediting America. All right, so today we're in Richmond, Virginia. After a failed attempt yesterday at picking up a load, um, they gave us the wrong address. And uh, by the time we got the right address, the place was already closed, so they gave us a tono of 150 bucks. Um, found a place to sleep, found a gym. Woke up this morning to a load from here in Virginia to California near Los Angeles, about 2,600 miles or so. Got to be there by Tuesday. Today's Saturday. Um, but yeah, let's get our day started. Let's get going. Say hi to everybody. Come on. There he is in the flesh. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Let's get our day started, everybody. Hope you're having a blessed day. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's make this money. Bow. Got a little buddy in the back with you. I got. If you look, look at my look at my driver's yeah. side. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hello. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we bring him to the office every day. Oh, he's in, he's in the office with me every day. Oh, yeah. so. So what am I hauling? Do you know? Uh, it's uh, some some fixture for a Puma store. Okay. That's what I kind of figured. All right, well, you're looking at it, guys. We have one pallet, 52 by 32 by 60, 578 pounds from shelving for a Puma outlet store in California. And once again, here's another great example of why it's not necessary to have a high roof fan, but it does come in handy sometimes. And just FYI, I'm not saying you need a high roof fan to do expediting, but it does help open your search criteria to more loads. No, I'll be there by Monday afternoon. What? Yeah. I do like a thousand miles a day. Oh, sign in print. Yes. Right. Nah, I appreciate it, man. Thank appreciate you very you. much. All right, so you always want to make sure that your load is secure and strapped in. My first week. I was driving, I had three pallets back here, about 3,100 pounds my first week. They had me crazy, crazy heavy. And I didn't have it strapped in properly. It was barrels, and barrels are tough to strap down. Um, but I didn't do it properly. I had like two straps, and I thought it was all good. Had a situation where I had to press the brakes really hard, and all those pallets went right back up to, to the back of my seats. I felt it. And uh, ever since then, I always made sure I had more than enough straps. I should have an e-track in here, which I'll definitely end up getting for my van. Uh, but, you know, we make it work. I got plenty of straps in here, so we just strap down and stay strapped up. Go ahead and send a picture of the BOL, send a picture of the freight over to dispatch. They're gonna confirm it with the broker. And we're gonna get on the road, make sure everything's good. It's really important to double check everything because you don't wanna leave before everything's checked out and find out you gotta go back. I've done that a few times, especially when I first started out where I got really antsy, ready to go. You got a deadline, so you're just trying to get on the road. Sometimes they'll hit you up and say you got the wrong load, you know, or something's happened where you gotta go back and get something double checked. So uh, you definitely don't want to do that and add miles to your trip. We're loaded up here in Richmond, Virginia, ready to head to California. A little over 2,500 miles, no problem. Let's hit the road. Shout out to Silver Lion over here. Sebastian and them do a great job. You ready, Buck? Too cool. Let's do it. So we started off smooth sailing. Yeah, it got a little rainy and all that. 
But then Google Maps told me to go off uh, the highway for a little bit, and I was questioning wh whether I should do it or not. And I'm glad I did, because this traffic was held up for probably two or three miles. And uh, here's why. Not really sure on the status of the drivers, but let's hope that they're okay and uh, they were wearing the seat belts. But as you can see, it was, uh, it was a pretty wild crash here. <laughs> Welcome to Tennessee. All right, so I have a confession to make. I've never been to a Bucky's. You don't know what a Bucky's is? It's an oversized gas station that is uh, run by an overgrown, hat wearing beaver. I always see people on YouTube, you know, going to Bucky's and stuff. And, you know, they get like the hats and the shirts. I think that stuff's so corny. Yeah, like I said, nothing special about Bucky's at all. I mean, people are so weird about this place. Like, super fans buying shirts and hats. It's crazy. I got Bubba. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm just playing on my already knows. It says life is rough. Here you go, man. That's a good doll right there. Alright, y'all. So we found a uh, rest area. It is currently 1242 Eastern. We've been driving a little over 12 hours. Um, but we're gonna call it a night here. Road life. A lot of rest stops. guess what I'm doing I'm filling up gas we're out here uh, where are we right now Arkansas we're in Kansas Kansas part of my geography you know Tennessee Arkansas Kansas no Oklahoma <laughs> right now we're in Oklahoma <laughs> Kansas is above me so Oklahoma and then Texas, and then New Mexico, Arizona, California. Bow! Geography. Hope my second grade teacher can see this right now. Hey, Bubba. What you doing, buddy? Come here. Come here, bud. Say hi to the people. This is my dog. See my buddy? Love you, dog. Look at that, not even a hundred dollars. 94. It's a good feeling when you can fill up for under a hundred bucks. Day two, we just got into Texas. We'll probably stop in Amarillo, Texas, or we might go to New Mexico and hit Albuquerque up. It's an extra four or five miles. I mean, four or five hours extra. Um, so depending on where we end up stopping, we'll have about 12 to 16 hours to drive tomorrow. We don't have to be there till Tuesday, but I want to get there Monday night so I can sleep drop off on Tuesday, pick up on Tuesday, and head back east to the east coast. Going to hit up Florida again. Going to hit up Texas, Georgia, and Florida for a, uh, a shipper that I have a relationship with out of 
Palm Springs. Well, I was gonna stay at this Flying J here. But Bubba Joe has spotted some cats. And he is not gonna go to sleep as long as these cats are out there. Come on, Bubba Joe. Hey buddy. So we found a Planet Fitness last night. I ended up going a little bit farther than I was. Uh, made it to Amarillo. And uh, we're gonna make our way. We got 14 hours left. I'm gonna stop in Phoenix, Arizona, say hi to my cousin. And uh, probably finish off tomorrow morning. We don't have to be there until uh, five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is what, three o'clock or two o'clock uh, in the afternoon tomorrow. So it's not too bad. Papa Joe's ready to go. Let's do it. People always ask me, what's my favorite place to stop? You know what? I'm going to ask you guys that. Comment below. What is your favorite place when you're delivering something to stop? His name's Bubba Joe. What's your dog's name? Rainy. Rainy? Rainy. Hey, Rainy. You guys are like uh, alternate universe, you know, like, uh, what do they call it? Variants of dogs. <laughs> well, you guys have a great day. going on from New Mexico pretty cool cave here you know like some uh, old Navajo art on the walls pretty wild but we don't get to pee on some new shit and that's that's how we're doing it today just taking a little break if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell like and comment below if you have any suggestions about things I should see while I'm on my travels or anything of that sort, let me know below in the comments.
2 10 a.m four hours to go you ready bubba joe up good boy <laughs> Stayed at my cousin's house in Phoenix last night for a few hours and uh, got some sleep. We got up at 2 a.m. and uh, made the rest of the way over here to Capizone, California. Set up to work today in my slides. Not a bad thing. There you are. You ready to get out of here? So this is it. Okay, don't get it out of here. All right, if you stuck with me to the end of this video, shout out to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Here are the numbers for the trip. We did 2,527 miles, no deadhead miles. 2,650 was the pay, about a dollar for a mile, I think it was. 9,2750 for the van owner, that's 35%. We do a 35-65 split, and then 740 for gas. A little over seven tanks. And uh, yeah, we made it here safe and sound. Ready to uh, expedite another day. Just drop it down there by yours and I'll have him bring it in. Thank you, Mike. You're Short little legs and <laughs> big body. Yeah. You guys driving the box truck? Yeah. Yeah. You guys just do local stuff or? Yeah, we're all the way from the border. Okay. Nice. I'm from Florida. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Down the border. Yeah, the other border. Yeah. yeah, I just came from, I uh, picked up in Virginia and headed over here on 